Well, I grew up in an Air Force family, so I was really inspired by being around planes and, and, uh, and then watching the, the space shuttle um, launch for the first time back in 1981. So after becoming an astronaut and, uh, and taking on a technical job in the office, you wait uh, to be assigned to a mission. And then once you're assigned, we, we start about a, a two and a half year training process. We are uh, so honored to be a part of the legacy of the Apollo Soyuz um, docking that occurred uh, now 40 years ago. Um, we are excited to get up to the space station and uh, start the research that uh, will help us extend our presence in space and, uh, and uh, bring benefit back to, to mankind here on Earth. And, uh, the vehicle is re essentially ready to be put on top of the booster. And so this is so exciting to see, um, to see the vehicle just about ready to, to fly. Um, with, uh, with Misha and Oleg also, we're going to have the opportunity to learn from the most experienced uh, astronauts and uh, cosmonauts in, uh, on the planet. That uh, confirms it. The third stage is uh, shut down. Welcome to space to Ole Kononenko, Kimi Ayui, and Chell Lindgren. Next, the uh, U.S. astronaut, Chell Lindgren. You know, I think there are two things that I'm particularly looking forward to. The first thing is just the opportunity to look back at the planet. And then the second thing is really just getting to experience what it's like to live in space. And so I'm very grateful this, for this opportunity to be on the space station for, for a long period of time, to be up there for almost, a little over five months. This is something that I've dreamed of doing for as long as I can remember. So we want to welcome you here today. We're at Robinson Secondary School in Fairfax, Virginia. We want to welcome all of our students here and also everyone at home watching on Apple 21. My name is Brian Hazard. I'm a health and physical ed education teacher here at Robinson, also uh, the wrestling coach. Something that gripped me about that video was the look of pure joy. And uh, the look of pure joy on Chell's face because he reached a dream and it was really a full circle dream. I talked a little bit um, earlier today, and I'll, I'll say it again, about adversity. And Chell is one of these people who met adversity head on, and actually, uh, he's better for it. Chell, since the time he was uh, 10 years old, wanted to be an astronaut. When we were growing up, space was a place that, you know, when, when people were going to space, time shut down, we watched the launches, and that was something that he had always wanted to do. He went to high school here at Robinson, graduated in 1991, where he was an athlete, where he was an amazing student, a valedictorian, a member of clubs, a performer, and he did everything to go to the Air Force Academy to be an astronaut. 
In about 1993, 1994, he was in the middle of a flight way up, uh, higher than an airplane, but, but you were really practicing to be an astronaut, and he coughed, a small cough. Some of you probably, you know, it's a little allergy season, you have a <coughs> little cough. Well, because of that small cough, and I just heard one up in the stands, he was dropped out of the astronaut program because they said he had asthma. Instead of quitting, instead of saying, I don't want to do this anymore, he went and took another route, and he became a doctor, a surgeon, one of the best doctors in the United States. And he had a skill that was needed. He saved lives. So some of you, and how many of you all have ever had a dream I don't know, at home, in the, in the gym, here? We've all had a dream. And for those of you who've had a dream, how many of you have ever had that dream taken away from you? Or some of you might have quit that dream. Instead, Chell became a doctor. He went to Houston, where then he was picked up by NASA as a doctor for, for our astronauts and then sent to Russia at Star City, where he became a doctor for the cosmonauts. And then he said, you know what? I could do this. And he went in these hyperbolic chambers and he went and he said, do I have asthma? And the doctor said, no, you don't. So he, he, became, he went back into the astronaut pool for NASA and out of 3,500 applicants, he became one of 11 people chosen to work and be um, an astronaut and go into space. So in just a second, we're gonna have a downlink because this guy is not only a great student, not only a great doctor, not only a great astronaut, but a great man, one of my favorite people in the world. And after you talk to him today and after you see him today, you're gonna realize he's just a phenomenal, phenomenal person. His parents are over here. Uh, they're gonna come up and say hello to him in a little bit. And um, you, they're the reason why he's such a phenomenal person. But, but Jell, Chell is just a, one of the greatest people in the world. You can do more than just one thing. You can be a great student. You can be a great leader. You can be a great athlete. You can be um, a, a person of service. And you can put all those things together and be a well-rounded person. So to summarize, today we're going to have Chell. We're going to have a conversation with him. We're going to have some folks from Robinson, some students, asking him some questions. And it's just, it's going to be uh, a, a great joy. Uh, this is a Robinson Ram. This is a Fairfax County Public School student. And this is what we can do in Fairfax County Public Schools. Station, this is Brian Hazard at Robinson Secondary School in Fairfax, Virginia. How do you hear me? I hear you. I hear you loud and clear, Brian. How do you hear me? We hear you great, Shell, and so do all of our students here. Man, you look great. You look well rested. You look like uh, you've been eating well on the space station. You haven't lost weight. You look fantastic, and actually, you look stronger than you did uh, the last time I saw you. How's it going up there? I'm, uh, I'm feeling, uh, feeling great, uh, Brian. Things are terrific. We've had a great uh, two months thus far and looking forward to uh, the rest of this mission. In fact, Kimia and Alec and I are at about the halfway point. Um, the food is good. We're working hard and having a lot of fun. That's fantastic. Um, no, again, like I said, our whole auditorium is filled, our whole gymnasium is filled. Every TV at Robinson is linked on to you right now to see this Robinson Ram who is up in space. Now, my, my question before we get to um, our student questions, we're gonna bring them up. How did being a Fairfax County Public School student, and especially a Robinson Ram, uh, train you and influence you to do what you're doing right now? Well, thanks, thanks, Brian. I'm I'm so excited to to be um, talking with you all today. And first, uh, let me just uh, 
extend a, a, a warm hello to uh, Mr. Eli and the, the Robinson principal, as well as the faculty staff, and of course uh, um, the, the outstanding uh, student body that you have there. Um, I understand uh, also that some of my classmates and friends, uh, as well as my parents, are in the audience. So. Um, hello to you all. And then, of course, you and I, Brian, uh, are friends, uh, classmates, and uh, wrestling teammates. Um, so I'm super excited to, to be uh, to talking with you all. You know, um, Fairfax uh, County Public Schools, is, and, and Robinson uh, specifically, uh, I think provided, provided me with a terrific foundation to be able to go on uh, to further education and to really pursue my goals and to achieve uh, this dream of uh, flying in space. All right, well, we have a couple of student questions for you, and um, if you can just you know, answer these questions as honestly and as cool as you do everything, uh, that would be great. I'm in, I'm in eighth grade. Um, my question is, did any teacher from Robinson help to inspire you to become an astronaut? Thank you for that question. Um, you know, my uh, desire, my dream to become an astronaut uh, preceded even my time at Robinson. It's something that I wanted to do for as long as I can remember. Uh, but I can tell you that the, the teachers at Robinson, um, the staff, the faculty at Robinson, my classmates were all incredibly supportive um, and encouraging. And, and like I said, the, you know, the academics at Robinson, uh, the, uh, the extracurricular activities, the, the sports that I was involved in, all really, um, provided some aspect of uh, training or um, hardened my character uh, and uh, furthered my desire to, to pursue my goals. And so I'm very thankful and proud of uh, my Robinson uh, heritage and, uh, and look where it's gotten me. It's awesome. Uh, my name is Will and uh, I'm in 12th grade. And my question is, um, what kind of equipment do you use on the ISS to stay uh, physically fit in microgravity? Hey, well, that's a that's a great question. You know, we have uh, three main exercise devices. We have uh, the uh, a cycle ergometer, essentially an exercise bike. We have a treadmill, um, and we also have something named ARED, the Advanced Resistive Exercise Device, and it's something that we can use to get a resistance or um, kind of weightlifting type of workout. Of course, weights don't work up here, so we use evacuated cylinders. Um, essentially kind of vacuum cylinders in order to provide that resistance. And we can get, you know, the equivalent of up to 600 pounds on that thing. So we do a lot of exercise. And exercise is not only important for, for folk, folks on Earth to stay healthy, but it's incredibly important for us up here. Um, it's how we maintain bone density and strength, muscular strength, a cardiovascular fitness, so that when we return to uh, the Earth that we're in good shape. My name is Allison, I'm in 12th grade, and my question is, what types of power sources are on the ISS? Hey Allison, uh, that's a great question. You know, the ISS is an incredible test bed, not only uh, serving as an, an international laboratory for research that will help extend our, uh, our humanity's presence um, in the solar system, but also benefit the Earth. Um, it's also a test bed for exploration. It's giving us an opportunity to figure out ways um, to build things, uh, provide resources, and, uh, and do the things that we need to do in order to be able to explore far-flung destinations like Mars. And so the, um, the power on the International Space Station is provided by the huge solar arrays that we have outside, and that provides all of our, our power needs. Well, and like all the students here, I mean, you got to charge your phone every night too, right? <laughs> um, hey, Chell, real quick. So you have a great crew. You have uh, five other folks that you're in there with. You're a doctor and you're on board with Scott Kelly who is uh, gonna be on the ISS for a year. How is your scientific research aboard the ISS advancing our understanding of the human body? Uh, 
Well, that's a, that's a great question, and that's part of um, why Scott Kelly is spending a year up here. His twin brother is on the earth and serving as a control, and so it's really giving us to look uh, an opportunity to do research and experiments and look at changes that occur in the human body over the course of that long duration in space. Um, but the other research that we're doing really gives us an opportunity to look at some of the things that we wouldn't have the opportunity to look at on Earth. So in the absence of gravity, we can see rapid bone loss. We can see changes to the cardiovascular system, to the vestibular system, um, to, the, to the anatomy of the eye. And so these are all uh, conditions that mimic conditions that we see on Earth, like osteoporosis, bone weakening. Um, or aging, accelerated aging, or changes in immune function. And so by studying these, uh, the, the effects of microgravity, of space flight here up on the space station, um, it can shed light not only on preserving our health, but uh, improving health for others on the Earth. I'm Matthew, I'm in 12th grade, and my question is, what surprised you the most when you first experienced weightlessness? Hey, Matthew, um, you know what, I think, you know, for everyone that thinks about living or working in space, the weightlessness is kind of that key thing. The, op the ability to just float and uh, to do crazy things like flips like this. And I think that the thing that surprised me the most when I got up here is uh, really how clumsy I was. And so at the very beginning, um, we would uh, fly through the modules and knock all sorts of stuff off the walls. Eating can be a really big mess if you're not careful. And so, you know, trail mix will go everywhere. Oops. We'll go everywhere, just like that. And soup and, uh, and rice and corn just goes absolutely everywhere. So you kind of figure out strategies to, uh, so that you don't make a huge mess. All right, before we ask any more questions, I, I just want to welcome your, your folks, um, Randall and, and Anita. Um, just they want to say hello to you really quick. I wish we had a way to send you a bib, Chell, if you could use one. Hi, Chell. I haven't nuked any of my shirts lately. Hi, Mom and Dad. I'm glad you guys could make it today. They're doing great. I'm just so glad they're here from, from Burke and, and that, uh, you know, we could have you, uh, you know, be a Burke Center resident and, and a Robinson Ram. Next question, come on up. Hi, my name's John, um, I'm in eighth grade. And my question is, do you have a hard time sleeping in space? Hey John, that's a, that's a great question. Sleep is of course critical um, for us up here as it is for everyone on the earth. You know, if we're not sleeping well, uh, we can't do the complex activities that we have to do up here. Um, some people sleep great up here, some people have a, a hard time. I actually sleep pretty well up here. I have a, we all have sleeping bags in our crew quarters. Uh, I just tie one little tether of my sleeping bag to the wall so that the sleeping bag doesn't fly away. Um, but then I crawl into my sleeping bag and I essentially just kind of float in my crew quarters in my sleeping bag. And you just kind of float in this position for the most part um, and sleep kind of like this and it's very comfortable. Hi, my name is Monica, I'm a senior, and my question is, uh, did you experience space adaptation syndrome? Thanks, Monica. Um, so, for as long as I can remember, I've been interested in space, and, and uh, my background is as a physician, and, uh, and I've been studying the, the effects of space flight on the human body uh, since undergrad, and, uh, and so, Space adaptation syndrome is one of those things that's very interesting uh, to read about. And for those of, the, those of you who don't know what that is, space adaptation, adaptation syndrome or space motion sickness is essentially kind of the feeling of discomfort and nausea that uh, most first time flyers, as, as well as some uh, return flyers, will get on the first few days that they get up here um, into orbit. And so, yeah, the, the first couple of days uh, that I was in space, uh, I didn't feel great. I felt nauseated. I had a very full kind of sense of feeling in my head because all of the blood um, that normally gets pulled down to your legs when you're standing up on Earth, you're, all of those physiologic mechanisms continue to work and all that blood kind of shifts up into your chest and into your head. 
And so you'll see um, a lot of astronauts, especially when they first arrive on orbit, their faces look very full. Um, and I can tell you that I was pretty uncomfortable for the first couple of days. So recently you ate some lettuce that was grown in space, and I know you had wanted it on a hamburger, but how did it taste? Right, and that, that lettuce actually tasted great. And so it was a lot of fun to, to get to eat something that we had grown up here. Um, but, you know, just getting to raise that lettuce, that, that was kind of my project uh, when I first got up here. And so I got to water the plants, take photos of them every day. And so just the act of taking care of uh, this green living thing um, was very, I think, psychologically benef beneficial. Um, you know, the space station, for the most part, is very white, aluminum, sterile. And so having this green growing uh, plant in the space station was a lot of fun. We had, a, you know, we had a lot of fun getting to harvest it and, uh, and to eat it. And I'm looking forward to figuring out how to grow pizza up here. My name is Kate. I'm in eighth grade. And my question is, when working with astronauts from other countries, what languages do you speak? That's a great question. We are an international space station, an international partnership um, with multiple, multiple uh, countries involved in this amazing, amazing adventure. Um, while we're on the space station, we generally speak English uh, on the US segment. And when we go over to the Russian segment of the space station, uh, we try to speak uh, Russian over there. And so I would say that 95% uh, of the time we're speaking English just because uh, that's, we're, we're spending most of our time in the US segment of the space station. But when we go over to have uh, dinner with our Russian colleagues, um, we'll, we'll try and engage them in Russian. And that's a big part of our training. You know, In addition to learning space station systems and how to use the robotic arm, how to do spacewalks, how to conduct experiments, we have to do l Russian language training. And, uh, and so that's a very challenging part of uh, the training process. Hi, my name is Iman. I'm in 12th grade. And my question is, we hear you grow in space. So have you noticed any changes? That's a great question. Um, you know, when we say grow, we, we grow in length. And the reason for that is we don't have gravity compressing, basically compressing our bodies down. So the intervertebral discs tend to get a little more hydrated and expand a little bit. and so. Um, people can grow from half an inch to an inch to maybe an inch and a half. And, uh, and for some, that causes back pain. Um, it can make your spacesuit not fit you so well, your flight suit not fit you so well. Uh, and, and that actually uh, tends to go away once you get back to the Earth and, and gravity is compressing you again. I really actually haven't measured myself. I have noticed that my, um, my flight suit is a little bit, uh, feels a little bit shorter than it was when we started out. And uh, before we do our spacewalks that we have scheduled, Scott and I have uh, spacewalks scheduled at the end of this month and early in November, um, we will actually get into our spacesuits and check the fit to make sure that, uh, that we fit in those okay. And if we have to, we can make some adjustments. You're an absolute rock star, Chell. Hey, uh, we have another student question coming right now. Hi, I'm Michael, I'm in eighth grade, and um, I'm wondering, now that you're living in space, um, what are some of the things on Earth you have a greater appreciation for? Michael, that's a great question. You know, I think that uh, it essentially kind of comes down to the, the things that you maybe take for granted. Um, when you're living on Earth. And, and one of those up here is just the ability to, to go outside. You know, we are in an incredible uh, engineering marvel. Um, this space station that has the internal volume now of about a five bedroom house. It's, um, it's an incredible amount of space. I've never felt claustrophobic up here. But uh, still, you can't just, you know, go outside, go for a walk with the family. You can't um, hop in a car and, and go out to eat. Um, you're, you're stuck up here, stuck in here for the duration of your mission. And it's not a bad thing. You know, we have this amazing opportunity to look outside uh, at the beautiful earth below us, which is always changing um, under different lighting conditions. And, uh, and so that's an amazing thing. But uh, things like simply going outside uh, is something that you come to miss. So, Chell, recently uh, I was looking on your Twitter feed, and for those, you know, astro underscore Chell, um, 
Tell me a little bit about recently you, you got to talk to Matt Damon and about his movie. Uh, how was that? I mean, he was talking to you like you're a rock star and he's a, he's a star. Tell me about it. You know, that, that was a lot of fun. Um, we had heard that uh, Matt Damon was uh, doing a tour at uh, Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, another NASA center. Um, and uh, I think that was as, kind of as a part of uh, the m movie tour. And so we called one of our friends that knew that was uh, actually escorting him at JPL, and they handed the phone over to him. And that was really cool, you know, to get to to, to chat with him. You could tell that it was his voice, and uh, and and so it was fun to get to talk to him. We saw pictures later and 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 uh, talked with our friends, and they said that he was also very excited to talk to us. So that was neat. I'm glad that uh, he was excited about getting to talk to us up here on the space station. And uh, it, was, it was a fun conversation. That's fantastic. And, and Chel, uh, being a Fairfax County Public School student, we chatted a little bit about that earlier. Do you have any advice for students um, who are here today or watching at home uh, ab about you know, how to be a, a great person or, or just any advice at all? You bet. I've got, uh, I guess, three three uh, points of advice. First of all, I mean, if you have the aspirations, you know, whether it's to become a doctor, um, an engineer, a lawyer, a teacher, uh, or an astronaut, you know, you need to make that goal. You know, really solidify that goal. Figure it out. Figure out what it is that you want to do, what you want to accomplish, and then work towards that goal every day. What, small steps, big steps. Make um, a conscious effort to address that goal on a daily basis. Secondly, you know, as you are deciding what you want to do um, career-wise, you know, think about, uh, choose a field of study that you're, you're passionate about, that interests you. You know, um, you are going to excel at, in an area that, uh, that you have a passion for, that you have a love for. And then, um, Finally, I would say um, if you're interested in, in doing this and becoming an astronaut and, and, and exploring the moon and, and being part of that generation that's going to explore Mars, um, re really get involved in courses in science, technology, engineering, and math. That is the, that, that's the language of space flight, and, and you need to be fluent. So uh, those are my three pieces of advice. Chell, we are so blessed that you're up here with us today. And uh, we're so proud of you, and we're so proud at the fact that um, you are a Robinson Ram. Um, Godspeed to you. We just hope that you are safe, and we can't wait to see you when you come back down to Earth. And we hope you come to see us maybe in person here at Robinson. What do you think, Robinson? Would that be great? All right, Chell, have a great one. Good luck to you. Brian, uh, Mr. Eline, friends, family, and classmates, th thank you so much for letting me join you today. It's been an absolute blast talking with you. Um, I'm so excited to have gotten to spend some time with you. Um, I'm extremely proud to be a Robinson Ram. I wish you all of the best. Um, students, uh, take advantage of the amazing opportunities you have there at Robinson and Fairfax County Public Schools, and reach for the stars. All right. Thank you so much. Best of luck to you, Chell, to our TV audience at home. Uh, we thank you for viewing, and we, uh, we look forward uh, to more access with the International Space Station. Visit nasa.gov. Have a great day. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you.